So historically, I've never really been a fan of the Adidas Lystung weightlifting shoes. They first debuted in 2016 as the Adidas Lystung 16, and that was for the Rio Olympics. 2017, they brought the shoe out again with a few changes to the upper and the bow lacing system, and they called it the Adidas Lystung 16-2. Now it's 2018, there's a few differences to the upper once again, and the shoe was still called the Adidas Lystung 16-2. Why the naming process is the way that it is, I have absolutely no clue. It would honestly to me make more sense if it was the 16-17 and the 18 Adidas Lystung, or the Adidas Lystung 3, maybe drop the 16, I don't know. I get that it's the year that the shoe came out, but anyways, that's besides the point. 2018, we have the new Adidas Lystung 2 16. Has a few updates to it, mainly in the upper. A lot of the things from last year's model remain the same. There are some little quality of life changes. There are some little visual changes, but overall the shoe is pretty much the exact same thing. Now, the build quality with the Adidas Slice Tongue is top notch, as with most Adidas products. This is a really well built weightlifting shoe. Obviously, the biggest difference between last year's model and this year's model is the difference in the upper. Last year had this kind of woven material for the upper. And this year, you have a mesh material. When this shoe first uh, was appearing up on pictures, it kind of looked like it was a knit material, but it is not a knit material. It's just a mesh material. There's a lot of structure to the upper, so you don't need to worry about the knit being too flexible or anything. Now, another difference to the upper is that the leather bits are a little bit more refined looking. There's actually a leather panel here as compared to the previous model in the medial inside part of the shoe it was like a mesh part that had the adidas logo now it's a leather part the other colorways for the 2018 model i think look a little bit more clean there's a white one and there's a black one the black one looks really sick this is the ash gray and it kind of has a teal tint to it i want to say it's more on the green side than silver or gray or anything so with the 2017 and 18 models, the lacing system was changed to a normal lacing scheme, which included obviously normal laces, uh, as opposed to the 2016 model, which just used the BOA dial system to tighten up the whole shoe. Now the BOA dial system is just for the medial strap, and it just tightens up the mid part of the shoe. That is one of the best upgrades that they did on the last year's model. Now, compared to last year's model, this year's also has a little bit more cushioning at the tongue, and it has a little bit more cushioning around the ankle collar. Honestly, you're not gonna really notice that unless you had both shoes next to each other or both shoes on at the same time. And then we have the new mesh upper. Like I said before, it is not a knit material. It does breathe just about the same which was a little bit disappointing in my opinion and but it does flex a little bit better it's more multi-directional in the way that the shoe flexes at the toe area so there's not as many like linear creases throughout the toe box i honestly thought the original model was flexible enough but this one does flex a little bit better it's a little bit more comfortable overall and that's going to improve the sizing of the shoe a whole lot which i'll go over in a little bit and then the outsole, while it looks the same, is made out of a stickier material. The grip is definitely better on the 2018 model over the 17 model. Now, when it comes to fit, the new mesh material makes these shoes fit a little bit better in my opinion. So, with last year's model, I had a 9.5 to start, and they were tight. So, I had to upgrade myself, or I had to size up to a size 10. And then there was a little bit too much space. I went back to the 9.5 in these, and it's a snug fit, but it's still comfortable. And I would take it over having too much space in the toe area of the shoe. I could work out in previous models, but 
I think that the fit of the 2018 model is improved over last year's. The sizing should be as follows. I would size these like your normal weightlifting shoes. So if you have like Romaleo 2s, Romaleo 3s, Addy Powers, then you're probably going to want to go with the same size as your Lice Tongue 2. Uh, if you are coming from a training shoe, then you're going to want to go down half a size to your Adidas Lice Tongue 2. For comfort and flexibility, the upper is a little bit more flexible. Nothing to write home about. Not a huge difference. I did think that the toe area of last year's shoe did flex plenty fine, but there are like these little creases as compared to the new model, the creases aren't so prominent. So I definitely see the upgrade there. I feel like the footbed might be a little bit softer on this shoe. Don't quote me on that. But, you know, I might just be looking for things. Obviously, the ankle collar does have a little bit more cushioning. It, for, the, for what it's worth, is, you know, it's a fairly comfortable weightlifting shoe. I wouldn't say that it's as flexible as a leather shoe, but it's better than most synthetics. Now, I've always thought that the Lice Tongues were a very stable shoe. The only thing that I did not like about them was the heel height. And that's going to be a subjective thing. Whether or not these shoes are going to work for you, you know, it's really going to depend on who you are as a lifter and what your strengths are. The base of the shoe is wide, it's flat. The new outsole material makes grip much better. But overall, Stability from the previous model is pretty much the exact same thing. I'd say these are a little bit wider than the Addy Powers, but that's not a huge difference. They're definitely not as wide as Legacies, which are probably going to be the most stable shoe. Obviously, they do weigh a little bit more than the Adidas Slice Tongues, which weigh in at 17.7 for a men's 9.5 compared to last year's model, which is... 17.9 but then you also have to consider that my last year's model are size 10 so they're a little bit bigger overall like I said before subjectively the heel height is either gonna work for you or it's not gonna work for you personally doesn't really work for me I struggle to find my balance with the heightened heel on this shoe it's only a quarter of an inch but when you put that into a shoe and it really just changes the whole dynamic of how your foot balances out. The catch positions for me are gonna be a little bit better. I'm gonna have a more upright torso when I'm catching in my snatch, which I really do like, but due to my pretty crappy lat mobility, catching in a front rack is not the greatest in these shoes. I have a slow turnover and I usually end up with too far forward Another thing for me that doesn't really work out as well is that I am a little bit more posterior dominant, so I have a harder time creating any kind of leg drive because of the more forward platform of these shoes. You're gonna have to really have a pretty good or pretty strong uh, anterior so that you can drive hard off your quads. So that's not to say that these can't be used at a high level because there are definitely really skilled weightlifters that use Adidas Slice Tongues. They're just not for me. So what I would recommend that you do is if you decide to try these shoes out, buy them from Adidas, you can use them, and if you don't like them, you can return them. The 2018 Adidas Slice Tongue retail for $225. That is their MSRP. That's what they have always sold for in the past, but it does also make them one of the most expensive weightlifting shoes. In comparison, Lexi's retail for $200, Romaleo's sell for $200 as well. And you can easily find any of those at a discount. And you can even find last year's model, Adidas Slice Tongue, at a huge discount. At one point, these were selling for like $100, not including a 30% off coupon on adidas.com. If you look on Amazon, you could probably even find your size in these. For like 30 bucks so I honestly recommend that you do your shopping around and you probably are better off spending your money on last year's model than this year's model because there's not really a huge upgrade between the two the upper is definitely better on this shoe but it's not worth like 
$150, almost $200. Honestly, I think the Adidas Life Dunk 2 is actually a pretty good shoe, but it really just depends on who you are. Personally, the shoe doesn't work for me, but if you have bad mobility or you have strong quads, then the Adidas Life Dunk 2 might actually be a shoe for you. Just make sure that you can try it on and wear it, test it out before you actually commit to the heel height of this shoe. If you guys have any questions about the Adidas Life Stunk 2, feel free to leave them in the comments section. And as always, guys, please hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.